So what we have in these beakers is liver that has been ground up with some deionized water. Yes, it was a little bit gross. But liver is really good to use because the enzyme catalase would be found in high concentration in the liver because the liver's job in your body is to um, break down toxins. This is not human liver. Um, it is actually chicken liver, which you can get at the grocery store because some people eat it, and it's very cheap because not many people eat it. Okay? So, we are going to do two separate experiments to show different factors that affect the rate of enzyme activity. The first set of uh, graduated cylinders we're going to be using to test how temperature affects enzyme activity. So we have cold liver, which has been kept on ice packs. We have boiled liver, and we have fresh liver. And what you're going to be recording is a, a qualitatively how much fizzing do we get. Do we get a lot of reactivity, a small amount of reactivity, no reactivity? So how much bubbling do we get? Okay. So I have already put in here the hydrogen peroxide, and I'm just going to add my three types of liver, my room temperature, uh, my boiled, and my cold. The first graduated cylinder, which is the first row in your data table, is the fresh liver at room temperature. Ooh. That's a lot of bubbling, and it's actually smoking, too. So that's a lot of reactivity. The B graduated cylinder is actually some boiled liver. Remember what you learned yesterday about what happens at extremely high temperatures to enzymes. Do we have any bubbling there? No. No, we do not. All right, now I'm going to use the cold liver. And I'm going to hold that up so those of you in the back can see what's going on. We have bubbling, but is that bubbling as vigorous as it was in graduated cylinder A? Okay, no, it was not. Now we're going to move on to the next set of experiments, which is really um, just the pH differences. So in D, E, and F, I have, well, F is neutral. What's in D? Yeah. What is it? Acid, and I put in E, I put a base in there. And also some hydrogen peroxide. And for this one, I'm going to use fresh liver for all of them, so the only variable is the pH, and temperature is not an issue. So we have D. Mm -hmm. We have E, which is a base. And then we have the neutral. Notice which one completely overflowed. Look how much bubbling you got in F. Now, when you're answering questions on your lab sheet about what was happening in each of these graduated cylinders, be careful not to just tell me that something is not reacting very much because it's not at its optimal temperature or pH. I want to know what's happening at the molecular level that is making it not as reactive. And on the conclusion, all I want is for you to summarize your observations and what was going on and why.